lovely morning here at Ever Wilder and I've come down to some young black locust trees and you can kind of see here they've got two or three clumps behind me and they're they're really starting to get tall above my head and they have this nice pinnately compound leaf meaning one leaf contains lots of these little leaflets and there's little spikes down here at the the base of these leaves as well and this tree has a poor reputation because of those spikes and because of how kind of weedy and fast it'll grow. Now it's a really hard wood, it's a heavy wood and a good burning wood, but it does grow very fast. And I think that's a bonus. This is, this is less than two years growth, probably a year, year and a half growth. I've already cut this back um, since I've been here and it, it's just totally spreading forth. The more you cut it back, it seems like the more it comes and you'll get these these roots will come out and they'll sucker little saplings just up in your lawn, you know, somewhere if you're cutting grass near a locust tree, you'll get little black locust saplings and, and they're simple, they're easy to cut down, easy to control in that way. But, you know, if you're planting this, do use caution because it, it does have a spreading nature and if you don't have the room or the space to really appreciate it. So this tree grows all throughout the southeast and up into the north, I'm not quite sure how far, but it's very prevalent in North Georgia where I'm at and it will it loves a good sandy loamy soil but it, it grows in an array of soil so this tree does not have difficulty growing i have this mostly coming in at the edges of my field and forest so let's go check out a few other specimens so black locust has a ton of um, uses utilitarian uses craft uses and one of those that's very common in the south are fence posts and you can see here, this is a garden fence. We got it about six feet tall, which so far so good on the deer. It's a very rot resistant wood. And this, it's got this deeply furrowed kind of crisscross bark. And that's a good identifier, kind of like sassafras, even hickory trees and really old tulip trees have this crisscross pattern in it. It really tells me that there's probably some good fibers in that inner bark, some fibers that you can use that you can rent and make rope out of. Now you can see down here, I've kind of stripped away all that bark before I put this in the ground. Black locust, as I said earlier, is a very tenacious tree and sticking the whole log in here with the bark and the cambium layer intact, you know, could be just as good as planting a black locust tree. And it's not that I don't want more black locust trees. I have quite a few in my garden already and I just don't want the root, uh, the roots going into the nice beds and, and popping up everywhere because it, it's a little um, difficult to control in that sense. Now, if you do have it growing and you have the space to grow it, grow as much as you can because this wood is so useful. They say these fence posts could last 100 years or outlast the fence. I mean, there's, you, you can really ask a lot of old timers and they know about the black locust sticking it in the ground. So in that regard, it was used as seal plates in the cabins, you know, to hold up old log cabins. They would use it to make ship nails or, or wooden pegs. And it, it's, it's so hard, it's actually attributed with winning the War of 1812. It was at Lake Champlain. There was a battle going on between Europe and America and, and their allies. And there's journals about how the European ships with oak nails, with oak um, pegs, just could not hold up to the cannon fire. They're, they're, but the American ships with black locust pegs did not suffer. And it was a, somewhat of a significant battle. So, I mean, it, you know, this is a very historically significant tree and it's so sad that it has a poor reputation amongst Southerners. Another reason I like black locust and don't mind it around my garden is because it doesn't cast a whole lot of shade. You know, I was kind of saying it, it grows in a good fence post manner. It's like it's kind of made for it. You can see we have a good size, a good diameter trunk and it, there's almost no branches as you go up this. Now there are vines up this and that's another good example. This is a great polyculture. It's, it's a legume family plant and so it's nitrogen fixing. It has this um, beneficial bacteria, the symbiotic relationship. So it can help help the soil. And, you know, growing vines up this, perfect. Ground nuts, passion flower. So many good vines you could grow up this and, it, and they would do fine together, especially if you planned on cutting this after uh, a handful of years for the lumber. Another good utilitarian use for black locust is the fibers and the cordage that can be taken from the roots. Now the inner bark can be peeled in the springtime really easily smells delicious smells like you're snapping green beans what it reminds me of and um, you can leave it solid to make these kind of good weavers or you can red it in a creek something like that leave it for a few days dry it out get it wet and it really strings up nicely you can hand twist some cordage now even simpler than that is just to simply dig these roots that are running out 
and they just go everywhere you'll see little black locusts popping up you dig those roots you'll know immediately that you have a locust root because it smells like green beans once again when you start messing with it you can pick those out of the ground and you can dang near just tie it in a knot that's pretty hard to find so it's it's good cordage good fibers in all parts of this plant so we have more good reasons to love black locust and that's the the food that it can provide the flower is the best eating admittedly i have not gotten to try a lot but it will be covered in white drooping flowers and you there's not a large harvest season but you pick them fresh enough and i hear it's got a really good flavor little bean pods is what i call them they'll come in after those flowers and apparently those were eaten as well um, you know stripped from the the sacks and remove those beans and boil them like that when they're still young and tender now this is one of the biggest black locust trees on my property behind me and this is about as big as i've seen it won't exceed you know really 16 17 maybe even 20 inches in diameter you know often just 70 feet tall 50 60 feet tall somewhere in there so while the black locust tree often grows uh, in a really good fence post manner meaning that there's not a lot of lower branches and it's it's primarily straight you know typically it's got a little bit of, of curve or angle to it but it, it's really straight and i would think inside of 10 or 15 years you can grow a tree that would provide you with several good fence posts now this is one of the larger specimens behind me and it's obviously too large to be used as a fence post but trees this large may have been used for seal plates on cabins and a few of those other uses we've talked about all right so here we have this nice black locust that's come over the creek and it's finally starting to show some signs of rot so this this must be a really old one but we have an interesting fungus here and it's what i call the cracked cap polypore and you, you we'll get us some up close shots but you can see that it's got cracks on the cap and it's got many many pores on the bottom so it's polypore this grows exclusively on the black locust trees in my area and that's one of the best ways i can recognize this mushroom is by recognizing the black locust tree so black locust is a you know some wood that i always have near my fire pit it's it's really crucial in my in a lot of my fire classes we'll definitely learn about black locust it's such a hot burning wood and it has this nice kind of creamy golden color and it splits up really well when dry i've heard that a prime cherokee blow dart shaft would have been from black locust and not just any black locust but one that had been lightning struck fallen over and caused these splinters if you've ever seen a fallen tree and sometimes you'll get these nice sharp splinters those were often picked for blow dart shafts by the cherokee and they they really put a lot of weight and merit into the natural nuances of of it being lightning struck and, and being fast and, and powerful so they would want to use that for their blow dart arrow shafts so if you've ever started a primitive fire you know it's a lot of work and once you get that fire started you don't want to let it go out and the natives in this area had a good way of transferring their fire and it was that cracked cat polypore that grows on the black locust tree this is known as commonly known as a tinder fungus and i'll figure i'll show you just exactly how that works all right so i've got some flame to this mushroom and traditionally if you had a nice fire you might could just put a coal because these these this fungus can get very large and you put a coal on it and you kind of blow till that coal transfers now what i have a piece is a nice piece of fat wood here and i'm really getting it on a single spot and what i've also done to help myself out is crack this mushroom open um, and I've kept it inside for a few days because it does matter that it's dry and eventually after enough flame you can start to blow and we can see the orange glow you can see how with every blow it just continues to grow now I'm going to blow blow and blow until this gets to about the size of a quarter in other words my my orange glowing area is going to be about the size of a quarter a nice nice big chunk of it that's glowing now the important part is here not to be inhaling that smoke so you see my motion i remove it away from me inhale and then a slow and steady blow too much it's going to blow those embers up in your face so i've never been seriously burnt you can continue to go this larger and larger by blowing on it and if the wind's blowing it's only going to help you out this is going to burn up pretty quick and you can see just a slight wisp of smoke maybe it, it just simply does not catch on fire 
So once you get a big enough piece of this mushroom glowing, you'll be able to carry this in your hand from spot to spot. And the Native Americans probably did this as well. There's, there's many different tender funguses all around the country. This is just one example of a shell fungus in the south. And it, it carries really easily. Now wind is going to help you. Wind is going to burn this up quicker. And if you were to put it in a jar and cap it, well, it would eventually go out. So you need a little bit of oxygen to, to keep that kind of coal burning. And it, it's, it's a really mild, uh, mild mannered, you know, burn. It's hardly even a burn. You know, once again, this, this absolutely will not catch fire. If you've, if you've gotten it to catch fire, I would like to see that because it's absolutely not happened for me. And I, I'm talking here, I'm, I'm paying no mind to it, but as you can see, if I blow on it, the glow comes right back. So this is how you would carry fire from place to place, village to village. Thank you.